This is our very simple, simple, um, basic go over of what tech ecosystems are. Um, so, uh, so Apple, Google, Microsoft tech ecosystems. This is our class for today. So, what is an ecosystem? Um, so, if we go back to the days of, um, if we go back to the days of when we were in school, in you know, middle school or middle school, probably middle school. Um, what is an ecosystem? Uh, it was first used in the field of ecology to describe a community of living organisms, factors, and elements, such as plants, animals, soil, climate, etc., and how these are, elements are always linked together. So um, if you remember, um, if you could hark back the image in your, in your unconsciousness of an ecosystem of how water um, is a cycle um, going from rain uh, falling down to the earth, um, and then going into the ocean and then evaporating back up into the clouds. Um, that is what uh, ecosystem in the traditional sense is, um, based off of just water, what water is. Um, so we have taken this term, or the industry has taken this term, um, and added the word tech in front of it, so a tech ecosystem. Um, so it can be, it can encompass uh, a larger part of things um, and it can be a family of devices. Um, so hardware devices such as phones, um, such as tablets, whether it's an iPad or whether it's a, I'm trying to think of another tablet now, uh, uh, iPads, or it could be, oh, an e-ink reader like a Kindle. Um, so those are devices um, or, you know, a laptop or a notebook. Um, and then from that, we also have applications, uh, whether that's something that's on the device itself, whether that's the Gmail app or the YouTube app um, or your messaging or iMessage app. Um, so the hardware, um, like I said, it's phones um, and the software. So within this, there's usually two types of there's two mainstream thoughts, um, whether it's a closed system or an open system. Um, closed systems we have is what um, a very famous one, I'm sure the majority of you do know is Apple. Um, they are very good at what they do um, because it's a closed system. So basically, um, so an iPhone, Apple Music, iPad, FaceTime. Um, they have applications and devices, so hardware and software, um, and they work seamlessly uh, on their devices. Um, so for example, you can't use, fa so FaceTime is a software or an application, and I cannot use it on an Android phone because the Android phone is not part of the, their system or their ecosystem. Um, they integrate it themselves so that they control every aspect of it, and that makes it great um, for the user. While, so I'm gonna go to the other side, the flip side, like an open system, um, like Android is, uh, you can use different types of application. Uh, so for example, um, do you guys remember when the first Mac computer came out a long time ago? Um, and at the same time, Microsoft was coming out as kind of like to uh, a, a parallel, a parallel of software companies coming out. Um, and what Microsoft did was that they instead licensed their uh, software. So whoever decided, whoever wanted to pay to use their software, they're able to do so. So, you know, that's why we have Dell, uh, we have uh, Lenovo, we have HP, they purchase um, licensing from Microsoft so that they can use Microsoft's products on their computers. Um, while Apple itself, they don't license out their products. So what people do is that it's, excuse me, it's exclusive to MacBooks, um, iMacs. Um, I'm trying to think of older names for Mac devices, but I can't remember them right now. Um, so it's a parallel. So you see that like, the applications or the software for uh, Apple products will be closed um, and they control every single aspect of it and which is great because they know how everything clicks and how everything looks exactly on a user's phone, on a user's MacBook. Um, while 
on an open system, it's different because there might be different manufacturings, the layout might be different. So um, each has its own pros and cons. Um, for example, here uh, on the open system, you can have an iPad um, and you can use a YouTube app um, and you can use Microsoft uh, Office 365 and you can be listening to music with your Pixel Buds. Um, while uh, if you're using if you're using a uh, Pixel, if you're using an Android phone, it's harder to it's it's not harder. It's it's impossible uh, to use um, some of uh, Apple's products. Um, so you can't use iMessaging. Um, you can't use FaceTime on your Android phone. Um, but some of the stuff Apple is slowly, reluctantly letting people cross over. Um, like Apple Music, you could use Apple Music on your uh, Android phone. You could use, um, I'm trying to think, you could also use uh, the part, part, I believe, of the Apple suite. Um, so let's go on to the next slide. Du, du, du. So major players, like I said, Apple, Google, and Microsoft. Um, there are other players here that um, I want to not acknowledge, um, Samsung um, and Amazon. So, but Apple itself is a good closed system. They make hardware, they make software. Google itself, um, they mainly make software, but they're slowly getting into the hardware business. Um, I'm teaching this class on a Chromebook, um, and that is hardware made by Google, and it's software made by Google. Um, and Microsoft, they make hardware and software. Um, and I'm able to access all my Microsoft items, my software on this Chromebook, um, because we use Office 365, Office 365 here at the city. OK, so I'm going to show you some pictures. Let's go over some quick pictures. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Perfect. OK, let's see. Apple, Google, and Windows. So this is this is my Windows Vista uh, desktop screen. I couldn't find a good Microsoft logo. But these are the three major players. Um, so with Apple, you'll probably see that um, I'll, the majority in San Francisco Bay Area, the majority of people use Apple devices or Apple's iPhones. Um, I will not be surprised if the majority of you are watching this on an iPad or watching this from a MacBook. Um, and Google itself, uh, they make Pixel phones and Chromebooks, um, but they are also available on Apple devices. Um, so you might have this, if you look at this, you might have this Google search function or this Google um, uh, Assistant app on your Apple device. Uh, Microsoft did make phones. I think that's my next slide before I forget. Yes, OK. So here, um, you'll see that this is an iPhone. Um, it looks very familiar. Uh, iPhones have a very distinct look across the board. Um, no matter what version you're using, whether it's from, I think the last one that's still working is, uh, let's see, six, iPhone 6. You guys should still be on the same uh, operating system. Um, but you'll see it's very, very uh, uniform. So you'll see that everybody has the same kind of like, you know, uh, display of the time on their phone. Um, if you see here in the middle, this is an Android phone. Uh, this is not made by, this phone is not made by Google. Um, but each uh, make, maker that makes their own version of an Android phone um, changes things to um, their own aspects. So this is an Android phone uh, or part of the Google e ecosystem. Um, and this here is a Nokia phone that runs off of Windows, um, which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, so Windows actually got out of that game. Um, they decided that it's not a viable method for them. Um, but if you look at this, uh, they were trying to mimic the, I guess, their design language. Um, so of design language of their, what was this, Windows 10? Windows 10? where everything was, no, Windows 8. Was it 8 or 10? I can't remember. But 
there was remember one window operating system where it was all just you would open the start menu and then you just see tiles um, and you click on the tiles. Um, but you'll see companies come and go with different devices. It was kind of like if we hark back to the days of um, when we had Blackberries and um, and then Blackberries went away and they're kind of coming back, but nobody wants them. Um, so companies will decide what they want to do with their devices. Uh, for example, here in the middle, this is an Android phone. Um, it's just like the major player for Android phone is what we have Samsung that makes Android phones. Um, and we know uh, recently uh, LG, which is another Korean company, announced that they are pulling out of the mobile phone market. So they're not going to make mobile phones or Android phones anymore, or phones in general. Um, so you know, leave Samsung um, and other companies such as Huawei, um, which doesn't exist in America, um, and you know, a Google Pixel made by um, Google itself. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. I'm gonna exit my full screen really quick. I want to see if there's any chat questions popping up because I can't see it on my full screen. Let's see. Uh, dun, dun, dun. I see. I see. Uh, Doug, will you address juggling devices from different platforms, Mac, laptop, Android phone? Uh, yes, we'll talk about it in a bit. Uh, dun, dun, dun. OK, let's see. Uh, let's talk about it in a bit. Let me finish that. OK, let's go back. Dun, dun, dun. OK. OK, so here you'll see that this is, I kind of did screen grabs so you can see. Um, I realized that even within talking myself, that a lot of times we might use things interchangeably, um, and that what happens is that then people start getting start getting a bit confused, um, which is fine because I get confused too about it. So don't worry. Um, so here I kind of kept this in the order of what the first slide was. So everything here on the left will always be an Apple product. Everything in the middle will always be a Google product, and everything on the right will be an Office or Microsoft product. Um, so here you see that if you have a Apple device, you see that this is what you usually have on your um, device when you buy it. It's like, sorry, on your MacBook. You probably don't have this on iPhone. Um, you'll see pages. Um, you'll see numbers. You'll see Keynote. So this is kind of what the app will look like, depending on what version of the operating system for an iPhone or a MacBook you're running. It may or may look a little bit different. Um, and then this here, um, if you have used Gmail or if you have any of a Google account, you'll see these icons and they might be very familiar to you. Um, mail, um, you could see the M here, but this is an older logo. Calendar, this is also older logo, but this is their calendar, Google Drive, Contacts, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, um, or just called Docs, Sheets, and Slides. So this correlates Oh, let's go over one more. So, and then this is something that might be more familiar to people who um, are working, um, uh, have worked in a traditional like office setting, because you'll see like Microsoft Word, uh, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft PowerPoint, Orange PowerPoint, uh, Microsoft Outlook, uh, OneNote, Publisher, Access. Um, so, when we're talking, we like to drop things also off. So, we, instead of saying Microsoft Word, you just say Word. Um, and then, but then Google Docs is also just Docs or Documents or Docs, uh, which is also then just pages in um, Apple. Um, I personally have not that seen that many people use pages, um, which is Apple's word processing application. Uh, I believe I was having a conversation with Michael. Michael says that people do use it, um, and he's seen people use it, which is wonderful too. Um, but these three things are basically the same, have the same outcome. They help you put your words onto a document or onto a sheet of paper. Um, you could see Word, Doc, and Pages. Um, and then here, this next one for uh, Apple will be Numbers. Uh, you'll see these bar, bar cha charts or bar graphs, bar charts. Um, numbers, which is the same thing as sheets, um, and which is the same thing as, as Excel. Um, so uh, we call Excel Excel. Um, 
and then we also might call it a spreadsheet. Um, and then, but then sometimes people get confused because it's also simplified as just sheets in as the Google app. Uh, and but in the Apple world, it's called numbers. Um, and then here for the last one, um, Keynote. Um, so a Keynote, you know, you this is like what Apple has every year when they announce fancy new devices, uh, the Keynote. Uh, this is the same thing as Microsoft PowerPoint, which is the same thing as um, Google Slides. So you would access these things differently. Um, so remember how I said Apple is a closed system. Um, so if you usually don't have an Apple device um, or an Apple ID, these things, actually no, if you don't have an Apple device, um, these things are usually closed off to you. Um, while uh, you could still use any of these Google items here totally for free. Um, there's no charge to use these. Um, but there are more functions to Microsoft off the Microsoft suite of items and the Apple suite of items. Um, so for um, yeah. So like I said before, going back to keynote. So PowerPoint itself, um, like I'm presenting this actually right now on Canva. Uh, which is not a power Microsoft, Google, or Apple um, product. It's just a standalone web-based product. So I'm teaching this all off of the internet. Um, so it's not tied down to one device or one ecosystem. Uh, let's go next. OK, so this is an example of each one. Uh, it may or may not look familiar. Uh, so this here on the left, you'll see that this is very uh, Apple-esque, because it is Apple. You'll see the familiar red, uh, yellow, and green. Uh, this is what a uh, Pages document would look like. Uh, this here is what a Google Doc or Google document looks like. Um, and uh, this saves all to your cloud automatically, because it's web-based. This here on the right is with the blue. Um, Microsoft's very good at color coding their items, just like Google. Um, and it's funny how they all kind of copy each other's color scheme. So blue is always word processing. Um, so Microsoft um, Word, you could either save, if you have it on a desktop, you could save it on a laptop or a computer desktop. Um, you could save it locally, so it's only on that device. Um, or you can also save it to um, the cloud, which Microsoft calls their cloud um, OneDrive. Um, I believe you can also save it to another cloud. You can also save it to Google's cloud, which is called Google Drive. Um, and this is where this is where I have to start speaking very, be very mindful of my speech so I don't mix up their um, their vocab their vocab chosen vocabularies. Um, so I'm going to go again here. So this here is. Um, this here is, what is this called? Numbers. This is called Numbers uh, on Apple. Uh, you might see this, it might be familiar to you. Um, here in the middle, this is called the Google Spreadsheet or just Sheets. Um, it's also green. You can see this is green. So green. Uh, and this here on the right is X Microsoft's Excel, which is something that we probably are more familiar with um, as this has been around for a very long time. Um, which is, I think, probably why a lot of the other, why, which is why Google probably emulates Microsoft by using the same color scheme. Um, but like I said before, these things you could save to your Google suite items are usually saved to the cloud automatically. Uh, Excel, you could save locally if you want to. Let's go to next. Perfect. Um, this I had to squeeze this way, so please pardon that. Okay. This here is Keynote on the bottom. This here in the middle is our um, Google, Google Slides. This here is our Microsoft PowerPoint. Uh, you'll see that Google Slides is yellow. Microsoft PowerPoint is orange. I don't believe Keynote has a color scheme yet. So you'll see that this is the same thing, and it's basically it's the same products, and each one makes their own products. Um, for example, it would be if you want to use a very modern day um, comparison, it'll be saying that um, 
you know, one company makes Coca-Cola and one company makes Pepsi and they're both the same yummy, sodity, sugary beverage. Um, or it will be saying that, you know, one company makes, one Starbucks makes dark roast and Pete's coffee makes another type of dark roast, but they're both dark roast. Um, so let's see, what else do I have after this? Oh, so here, here is where things get interesting and confusing for a lot of people, um, which I always get confused too. So here on this side, the left-hand side is the iCloud logo. So iCloud is Google's cloud um, where you would save your files, where um, on Apple devices you save your contacts, your iMessaging, um, everything that is linked to your Apple ID, um, you get saved to this magical cloud, um, or you don't have to save it to them and you get to keep everything on your iPhone. Um, and here in the middle is the triangle of Google Drive. So Google does not call their cloud a cloud. They call it Google Drive. Um, so everything goes in there. Um, and here on the right is the um, OneDrive. OneDrive. Um, <laughs> OneDrive, yes, OneDrive. Microsoft OneDrive. Um, and this is where all the um, Microsoft if you ever want to save things to cloud, this is where it is. So before I can, let me back up and what, what is a cloud? Um, so um, things in the tech, with technology, um, you, before, before we were so connected to the internet, everything could be saved onto your computer. That's very traditional. Like you could save, file, save, save on your desktop. And it lives there on your desktop, right? Um, and or you have and if if something happens to that computer or that desktop one day you spill a coffee on it um you cannot get that and your computer doesn't turn on anymore then that's kind of the end of it because whatever you saved was saved onto that desktop and it's stuck there unless you're able to fix it then you'll be able to retrieve that document or that file of whatever it is but with cloud com with clouds or with cloud storage um, you're able to save it onto a magical server far away from here. Um, and we just use a euphemism of calling it a cloud. Um, and those things get saved um, where then you can access it anywhere. For example, if I put um, a Word document, um, Microsoft Word document on OneDrive, um, and I decide to work from home today, uh, I, could, I could be at home, I can log into my OneDrive, and I could be able to either work on it online um, or download it and then work on it on my desktop at work. Same thing for Google Drive. Um, I believe for iCloud, yes, depending on the device that you're opening it with. Um, so it's kind of thinking of, think saving things locally versus saving things um, on the cloud. Um, both have its good and bad points. Um, there's always an issue of storage for both. Um, and then paid storage is a whole nother, another question. Okay, let's see. So this is a good picture I found of what um, the equal system was um, a while ago. And it pulls into different things. Um, for example, with here, you'll see Apple. Um, you see that not it's not just about uh, their devices and software. So Apple, they have Siri, um, iTunes, which doesn't exist anymore. It's Apple Music, uh, Apple TV, HomeKit is the products of things that you can use online. Oh, sorry, that attach so very well, like when they have um, smart plugs. Um, or devices that turn on based off of your location. Uh, Apple Watch, iPhones, Macs, MacBooks, Apple Health, Apple Pay. So this is all their product things that they have um, that people know. And then if we go to the next circle, the green circle, this is Google. Um, so you see that this, every ecosystem has their own version of an item. Excuse me. Um, and Depending on who you're using, some of them will talk nicely to each other and play nicely with each other. Um, for example, like uh, if you're on iPhone, you can access Google Drive. 
you could download um, a Google or GPay or Google Wallet. Um, you can use uh, YouTube Music. Um, and if you're on Apple, you could also use, um, you could use, oh, Microsoft Wallet doesn't exist. Um, um, you could use these products on an Apple device. This is an older, I took this from a blog. Um, but if you're on a Microsoft or Google device, that's kind of harder this way. So open, open, close system. And now let's go to the questions. Um, I think I'm going to take questions from Michael, who's been moderating the chat first. So Alan, uh, there was a question on one of the slides. Uh, there was two numbers in like the Apple OS window. Um, mm -hmm. What were the two numbers? The Apple OS window. Let me go look at that really quick. Let's go. Let me share screen and we'll look at it together. Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. The two numbers. Apple OS screen, the two numbers. This one, okay. So, um, so sorry, do you see this? I, 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 yeah, this is covered too. Um, basically, it's just, this is a fancier logo or an older logo when it was a 3D logo. Um, and then this is their logo as it is. Um, most likely if you see it on an iPhone. I'll show you this right now. Let me show you this. Um, oops. Let me show you this on the website. So this is Apple's website. Um, their, suite is called, their suite is called iWork. Um, so here, this is their logo numbers. Um, it's, it's the same thing. It's just that uh, with, if you, if you realize that, um, the design aesthetic, the design aesthetics of the world has become simpler. Um, if you really th like, think about the U.S. Think about the newspaper USA Today, how it used to be an actual globe, and now it's just a blue circle. So it's kind of the same thing with that. Um, how we went from, we went from, we went from this, or it's here where it has like bar graphs coming out of the, of the, of the numbers page or the numbers uh, to this green thing. Um, so it's the same thing. That's why there's two numbers. You'll see that it says numbers twice. Um, it's just the same app, just an older, an older app design of that. Um, hopefully that's kind of okay. Uh, let's go with the next question, Michael, hopefully. Oops. So there's a so there's a question on like the monthly purchase of iCloud. Does it go to my MacBook or my iPhone? Uh, okay, let me try to find you guys. Okay, here you go. Uh, so, oh, um, so your iCloud is attached to your attached to your Apple ID. So, I'm gonna open this really quick. You guys see my desktop, right? Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna type in iCloud. So as long as your um, Apple ID is on your iPhone and on your MacBook, that will go towards the same thing. You share it across all your um, Apple devices. So like, yeah, so here uh, you'll see the picture of the three devices that Apple is showing. Um, as long as you are logged into the same Apple ID, you will have it available on your iPad, your iPhone, um, iPad, iPhone here, same thing, MacBook, iPad, iPhone. So as long as you purchase, as long as you're logged in with the same Apple ID, they will know it too, and they will make sure you get that paid space. Uh, perfect. Uh, is there another question, Michael? So do you to read them do, you have, do you have any comments on uh, LibreOffice, like Writer, Calculator, and Impress, like the, on the Linux platform? Oh, I don't. I actually don't use any Linux um, Office suite items. Um, I also do know that, I'll tell you this, for people who there's a whole set of free Office suite items that's not Google. Um, like LibreOffice, um, you could use that too. It's totally free. Um, but I, I personally don't have any experience on Linux, so I cannot answer that. I'm sorry. Um, perfect. 
is there another i'm trying to i'm trying to go back and see where you left off michael um so uh, why see. would uh someone only save to the cloud why would somebody only save to the cloud that's a very good question uh i will answer this personally for example i use a google chromebook uh there is no local space on this chromebook uh so i have to save everything on my actually no i don't have to um, the majority of my files are saved on the cloud, um, and I can access them on my work PC, my work Microsoft item. Um, it's really up to you. Um, I don't want to open Pandora's box, but I'm going to open it right now. Um, there's always a security issue of saving things to the cloud. Um, just like saving things onto your desktop, there's always security issues also. Um, but for me, it's an it's a it's an access accessibility issue. Um, if I forget my if you have it saved locally on a laptop, and you forget a, your laptop and you forget to bring it to work, you might not have access to that file you're looking for. While if I save it to my OneCloud, if I save it to Google Drive, if I save it to OneDrive, um, and I forget my laptop, whether it's a MacBook. Um, or a regular PC, I can still access that. Um, uh, whether on a computer at work, whether I'm on my phone, I'll be able to access that file because it's saved onto the cloud. Um, so that's 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 my look on that. So should a person, should, yes. should person do both? A person can do both if you would like to do so. You could save a file locally um, and save one on your cloud. Um, I would be very wary of this too, but because what happens is that you can't remember which one you're working on and you update one and you forget to update the other. Um, and then you have to present this um, or you have to turn it into your boss. And then you're like, oh, I sent in the wrong one. Um, so be mindful of that. Um, it, is a, it is a good item. It is a good thing to back things up and put, you know, have another one, but uh, be mindful, be very wary of which one you're working on. So when you do click save, you remember, oh, I, I updated my iCloud version one or I updated my Google version one. Let me save one copy on my computer. That is the updated one. Um, I, I will also say that it's also like some people want to keep different versions of it. Like, hey, maybe I worked on this until today. I'm going to save this version on my computer um and then work on it next week um maybe i'm going like oh i didn't like what i did this whole week um i want to go back to last week's version and then you'll have a copy of it um on your computer um so yeah that's that so there's a question um like juggling devices from different platforms like mac uh, laptop and android phone for example so this is um this is a good question um so bookmark the self. So what you can do, so like I said before, Apple is a closed system. Um, and you can't get Safari on a PC. But what you can do is you could use an open system application on a closed system device. So you could use Google Chrome, uh, the browser on your Apple device, so that those bookmarks will be saved to Google Chrome. So when you're using Google Chrome on your iPhone, those bookmarks are saved there. And when you open Google Chrome on your um, PC or your MacBook at home, it'll still be there. Um, some people don't like using Google devices, which is perfectly fine. Um, you could then use choose a different one, Firefox. Firefox also offers logins. So you could have a Firefox. Um, Firefox is itself. It's not part of an ecosystem. Um, you could use a uh, Firefox um, browser account um, on your Apple device and then on your PC at home. Um, and then that will be able to cross over to both platforms, um, the closed and the open system, without having to be part of Google or Apple. Um, it's totally up to you. Um, but when you work in Apple and it's a closed system, it's also a wonderful experience, I believe. I've experienced it before too. So I know with Safari, um, if you're looking at Safari, which is Apple's web browser, um, for example, you're just on the you're waiting, you're on you're on the bus, 
um, you're browsing the internet um, on Safari, and then you get home, um, you open your iPad, and you open Safari on your iPad. Uh, you'll see like on the bottom, like this is your um, this is your Safari page you are on on your iPhone. Um, and you click on that, and then it brings you exactly to the same page you were looking at on your iPhone. Uh, this is also the same for Google Chrome, I believe. Um, a lot of the systems are kind of mimicking each other, so they're all trying to part in have this like seamless experience. Um, so, yeah, that's that's my that's kind of my answer. Use. Use use a use a use a software or part of an ecosystem that lets you cross over different platforms. Yes, uh, I'm looking at other questions. Michael, do you have any more? Uh, that's as much as I see so far. So um, right now, it should be a good time for you to unmute if I didn't get to your question or if you have any the questions. Oh. I hear somebody. You're kind of light, though. Oh, yeah. You yes. might be... Can you hear my name, Ethan? Uh, is that clear now? Uh, yes. Can you go a little closer to the um microphone? I did. Okay. Uh, so probably have background noise. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, you can hear me. Uh, my question is, how about the LibreOffice, which is a Linux platform? They also mm -hmm. have Writer, Calculation, and Impress. How do, what's your comments on, on this? Um, I um, So I don't have any comments, actually, because I haven't used the Linux Office suite. Um, I stay within Office 365. Um, Office 365 is what we use for our work, so I in this suite. Um, I also used Google Suite here, um, but I have not personally have any experience with the Linux suite of um, LibreOffice. Um, I know it's also free, um, but I personally don't, I can't make any comments on it because I haven't used it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, okay, um, may I ask my second question? Yes, please. Uh, yes, this question about the security. Uh, mm -hmm. You mentioned a, a little bit uh, in your presentation. Uh, how, you know, after we upload the, the files to the cloud server, like mm -hmm. iCloud or uh, Google, how how secure is the file saved, uh, saved in the cloud server? And after you upload, you are not ownership of your files anymore, right? So with all these tech devices, I mean, with a lot of these companies, it's kind of security, every, everybody will, everybody will, security is part of, a main part of their business model. Because if you think about it, why would Apple or Google or Microsoft provide a cloud or provide a service where it's not safe? So if, if I'm, if I'm going to be uploading my documents and somebody's going to steal it, then I would not use their product anymore. Um, so security is is always a concern when anything is dealt with online, whether it's online banking. Um, it's kind of like, how do you know your online bank is secure? Because they want you to trust them with your money. So it's the same thing with an Apple product. They want you to trust them with your files. So they're going to make sure that their device or their iCloud is secure. Um, there is debate about uh, things that when you put it on the cloud, whether it's actually yours or not. Um, for example, I know with Google, it's kind of like a learning, a learning process. The more with all artificial intelligence, the more you put into it, the more it learns about you. Um, so, you know, your pictures, they might be scanning them and looking at them, and um, which I personally don't find a problem with, um, but some people do find a problem with. It's also, um, it makes a great personalized experience because they help me group my pictures together. It's kind of like Facebook. Um, when you upload things to Facebook, they'll be like, hey, I'm gonna tag this person as Michael for you because you took a picture and I think it's Michael. Do you wanna tag this person as Michael? 
Um, so, yeah, I can't, it's security itself is a large, large question. Um, but I will say that if, if they don't make it secure, then they don't have a business model. Uh, yeah, just here's a follow up, then I'm off. Uh, it's, how about I uh, encrypt software, I encrypt my file before uploading to those cloud server. Is this a way to go to for more secure? Yeah, so encryption, so encryption, so basically encryption, what it is, is that when you, when you put your own, it's kind of, it's kind of putting your own in layman's term, putting your own lock on a file, like only you can unlock this file. So I'm going to put a, a locked file into the cloud. So if somebody does hack into your cloud, um, even if they have it, they won't be able to open it. Um, then it depends on how safe your encryption is or how hard it is to break your encryption. Um, so it's, it's, it's an extra layer of security, if you wanted to say that. Uh, the library can have set more this type of uh, presentation. Mm -hmm. So, Alan, we have Perfect. another question. Uh, so, yeah. uh, does the library have anything that could help, uh, like our users, kind of stay up to date on like technology devices or like softwares? Um, yeah, I see. Um, oh, I see her here with from Robert. Hi, Robert. Thank you. Um, so. I would uh, continue, we usually have uh, various different types of programming we have, whether you'll see me and you'll see Michael, uh, we teach various topics, um, whether it's part of, you know, Google Photos, um, but staying up to date with tech devices, um, there's a bunch of resources on our website, sfpl.org. Um, I would use, not, so I was gonna say Linda, um, LinkedIn Learning. There's a lot of resources that are free with their library, library card, whether it's Gale courses, whether it's Udemy, um, whether it's LinkedIn Learning, they will go into depth about these items, um, whether it's encryption, um, there's classes on encryption, what is encryption? Um, so those will go into a much deeper depth because there's it's it's a multi-hour course, um, and they will go over with that with you. And how do you stay up to date? How do I stay up to date? Um, yeah, yeah. Personally, um, it's it's part of for me um, Google News, reading the news, um, and it's also part of being interested. I guess um, for me, I will keep up more with um, Android devices. I personally use Android. Um, my family uses Apple devices, so I kind of have to be updated on that too because um, my parents will ask me like, how do you fix this? And I'm like, I don't know, let me read about it. So um, having a sense of, I guess, having it aware around you. Uh, I read the news. Um, there's a lot bunch of like different tech blogs, whether they'll focus just on like iOS software um, or they talk about Apple hardware. Um, that's how I keep, um, up to date. Uh, I see. Uh, um, I see something that just popped up. Let's see. Uh, numbers tutorial in the library. Um, I'm gonna. Let's look at the screen. I hope. Are you guys looking at my screen, Michael? Nod your head. Yes. Yes. Or no? yes. Okay. Let's look at. I'm gonna look at sfpl.org. I'm gonna see if we actually do have a numbers tutorial because that's the first question I've actually heard of that. Um, that's a pl.org. Go, go to our website. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's look on this together. Let's look for a numbers tutorial. Uh, e-learning. And then let's go to LinkedIn learning. Uh, get started. I'm going to see. What is my library card number? And I don't know that off the top of my head. Uh, let's do another one then. Uh, let me just do this. LinkedIn learning. 
uh, number Apple numbers. A lot of time, the funny thing with ecosystems is that they like to put their their name in front of it, so people don't get confused at what it is. Um, let's see. Oh, there is. So LinkedIn Learning does have a numbers essential class. Um, so uh, you you could ignore this. <laughs> it's it's free with your library card. Um, so go to the SFPL website, log in. Um, and you should find this numbers essential class uh, free with your library card. Uh, let's see. Learn everything you need to know and analyze and present data with numbers, the powerful spreadsheet application built into Mac OS. Um, so if you choose to use numbers, they do have courses available. I strongly recommend LinkedIn Learning. Um, it's free with your library card. Uh, how long is this course? Mm. It doesn't say how long this course is. Um, it should be near the middle. Or you, you might not be seeing it because uh, you're not logged in. Yeah, I'm not logged in. That's probably why. Um, but this is a class um, on, that teaches you numbers. Uh, I would, yeah, that's that.